Uh, but Gorbachev soon did reveal that he had some very new ideas. A and he introduced them under uh, the Russian words uh, that have become uh, so familiar now to us in the West, glasnost and perestroika, openness and restructuring. Openness was a particularly sh striking idea psychologically for a communist to promote because the whole communist system was based on being closed, uh, uh, on doing everything in secret. Uh, it's said that Gorbachev was convinced that he needed to undertake this campaign when he saw how the, uh, his uh, bureaucracy, his apparatus, even tried to keep the Chernobyl disaster secret, uh, uh, despite, uh, of course, the fact that it's uh, a nuclear uh, disaster on that scale. Nobody can keep secret. Uh, but that, that was their instinctive response. So he decided there must be uh, open discussion uh, and uh, open uh, reporting of the problems uh, in the country, in the, the government, uh, uh, more along Western lines than uh, anything like that had been seen in the communist system before. And restructuring, it might not have meant much. In fact, uh, Gorbachev uh, uh, meant it to mean that uh, uh, the, na the legislative organs, the elected legislatures, would be uh, not only in the, so the Soviet legislature, but in the constituent republics. There were then 15 republics in the Soviet Union. Each of them had a legislature. These legislatures would become more important. Instead of everything being dictated by the Communist Party, central committees, the legislatures would play a significant role. Uh, so these changes opened up um, uh, the long repressed anger, fear, and tremendous desire for change by the people under communist rule uh, in uh, the Soviet Union and in Eastern Europe. Uh, and once uh, the open discussions had started, once the uh, um, electoral activity began, uh, it was then possible uh, for even more fundamental change to take place. And very significantly, especially for Catholics, uh, the, the country that took the lead in uh, these changes was Poland, the most Catholic of all the countries brought under communist rule. Uh, of course, aided by the fact that the Poles had given the church a pope uh, and that Pope John Paul II was the uh, greatest living hero in the world to almost every Pole. Uh, I well remember when I was in Poland in 1980, uh, seeing uh, uh, the uh, whole streets in Polish cities uh, with his picture on every light pole, as far as the eye could see. Uh, so uh, uh, the Poles loved him in a special way, and they responded to him. And his uh, being the Pope uh, gave a focus to their opposition to communism that they had never had before. I'm sure that the Soviet authorities were aware of it, and I think it very likely that Andropov, head of the KGB, a ruthless man, uh, was behind the attempt to assassinate the Pope in 1981, though uh, he covered his tracks very well, if this were true, and it's been impossible so far to prove it, and it may never be proven. But it does seem to me likely. Uh, at any rate, the uh, assassination attempt failed significantly. It was attempted on the anniversary of the first appearance of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal, who later warned about the danger of communism on May 13th. I really wonder why that date was selected. Uh, it certainly suggests that the, uh, if the uh, Soviet leadership or any part of it was behind this, they well knew what had happened on that day and uh, perhaps wanted to show that they had the power to use it a different way, but they didn't. Of course, the Pope recovered. And he's always said he believes that uh, Our Lady saved his life that day because that was the day that, that she had appeared and the day they attempted to kill him. At any rate, uh, he survived, and uh, the uh, anti-communist uh, feeling in Poland was steadily growing. The great uh, anti-communist organization Solidarity was set up under the leadership of Lech Wałęsa. It had already been set up the previous year, 1980, and uh, was at the height of its uh, early influence in 1981. However, then the communist government moved at the end of that year to suppress it through martial law. Solidarity was banned and outlawed, had to go underground. Nevertheless, its influence continued. Successive Polish communist governments were unable uh, to uh, uh, exercise effective leadership in the country because so many Poles, or uh, most Poles, were either part of solidarity or deeply sympathetic to it, and the government was trying to uh, lead the country and stimulate production, and uh, uh, when it had this m a body of millions of its citizens totally opposed to it. 
So finally, uh, in the late spring of 1989, the Polish Communist government decided they had to negotiate with Solidarity, even though Solidarity was outlawed. Uh, so they offered a deal. They said, we will bring the outlawing to an end. We'll allow Solidarity to, to function if, if Solidarity will uh, temporarily stop its criticism of the government. Uh, and uh, uh, they even offered, the Polish government even offered uh, to uh, create a new house of the Polish legislature, which had only one house at that point, which is the communist control, uh, and to allow free elections for that new upper house. Well, this was done. There were 100 seats at stake. Solidarity won 99 of them. Uh, the 100th seat was won by an independent. The communists lost every single election uh, uh, that was held in, in that special spring election. That's usually what happens to communists when they face the voters. Same thing happened in Nicaragua uh, later on in the year. Uh, so uh, uh, this was such a blow to the communists uh, that, uh, and it's such a clear indication that the political change was occurring that would uh, uh, give solidarity more influence than the communists, that uh, a number of uh, legislators in the lower house that the communists had always controlled uh, now began to work with solidarity and stopped working with the communists. By August of 1989, it was clear that the communists were losing control of Poland and that solidarity would soon be able to take effective control of the government unless they were stopped by military force. Uh, as had been done in Hungary in 1956 and in Czechoslovakia in 1968. And so the foreign minister of the Polish communist government called Gorbachev on the telephone in August of 1989 and told him essentially what I've just said. Uh, we have lost control. Uh, communism will be defeated in Poland. A non-communist government will take over <clears throat> very soon unless you send in the, uh, the Soviet army. And Gorbachev refused to do it. He said, we will not send in the Soviet army. Uh, this doomed the communism in Poland and in all of Eastern Europe. Within the next four months, every single Eastern European country, except Albania, which lagged behind for a bit, uh, had overthrown their communist leadership uh, and had freed themselves from communist control. Uh, so the idea that communism was a growing force that would uh, gradually gain control of the whole world and never release its grip on any country that it had once conquered which had been maintained up to that time by the communists, could no longer be said or believed. Uh, so um, that was the end of, of communist dreams of world empire, world rule. Uh, and then just a few months later, in February of 1990, in Russia, uh, Gorbachev took an action of comparable or perhaps even greater significance. He ordered the removal of the legal and constitutional guarantee that the Communist Party would be the only legal party in the Soviet Union. Uh, this permitted the appearance of opposition parties, uh, of uh, new groups with political ambitions uh, in Russia and in all of the other republics of the Soviet Union.